Hey everyone, and welcome back to Pseudotech. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this new desktop that I got from FreeGeek. Just brought it home, and I just popped this top off so you can kind of see inside. I haven't booted it up yet, but it's supposedly running Xubuntu right now, and I'm probably going to be reinstalling that with probably, I don't know, server Debian, I'm thinking? Maybe CentOS, we'll see. Some kind of server Linux distribution. I actually picked this up at the FreeGeek in my area for $10, which is a pretty good deal. It was initially 40, but then they had this sale going on to try to clear some older desktops that were cheaper out. So it's down to 20, and then it turned out that the audio back here, I think the green one, the main one was giving like static. And I thought it might be an issue with the power supply, but since that's a server, that doesn't really matter to me, so I got it for $10, another 10 off the 20. So pretty good. It is currently, it's an FM2 socket and it's got a dual core AMD processor. I think it's at two gigahertz. It's an Athlon 64. Pretty good processor. It's in a lot of older computers and it should work pretty well for a server operating system today. It actually looks pretty good in terms of dust and other things like that. I was expecting quite a bit more dust in here, but it's just got a little bit on the fan, which you can kind of see, which you can see right there. And then just kind of, around, actually around it's pretty good, but we might be cleaning that out a little bit. And I'm definitely going to be taking out this big drive, which is a DVD drive and a CD drive, which I don't really need because who needs CD and DVD drives, especially for a server. So that goes right here. It is an HP, which I forgot to mention before. Um, it's got an Apple sticker on there. Start tearing it apart, see what we can get. So I'm taking off the one fan in here, only one fan for this little processor and just comes out pretty easily, no screws required. So there we've got the heat sink, of course. Um, we've got chipset here. It comes with NVIDIA graphics, just an onboard motherboard graphics, which although most onboard graphics these days come in the CPU, most of the older computers, it comes on the motherboard. Uh, they just kind of made a switch. It doesn't really make a difference. It's still gonna be onboard graphics. It's still gonna be pretty awful, but we're not even gonna be running a GUI with this, so it really doesn't matter. Now, I think this bay should just come out with some screws. So I'm going to take out this. I actually have a 500 gigabyte hard drive that I could hook up to this, which is a IDE one. So that should work just fine. There's also, I think, an 80 gigabyte hard drive in here with the Xubuntu installation, and that's plugged in via SATA with a Molex power. It's also got two gigs of RAM, which I think is the maximum for this particular system, but I'm not sure if that's from the motherboard or the CPU because I imagine the CPU can probably take more than two gigs. That's just what the manufacturer says, and that might actually not be completely true because I found that even some older things can handle more CPU than they're said to have, but I don't, I mean, I don't have any DDR2, so I can't really confirm that. Okay, so the optical drive is coming out pretty easily. Just a pretty standard one. Might use this somewhere else if I ever need an optical drive, but I don't right now. So I'm gonna try to get this Molex connector unplugged. There we go. So if the camera is focusing, Kind of is, pretty good. So you can see IDE here, Molex. We've got the controllers for Slave and Master here, which you have to deal with with IDE, fortunately, but we're not gonna be using that at all, so it doesn't matter. Here we've got our 20 pin, I think. Oh no, that's a, that's not a 20 pin. That's an IDE connector for that this was plugged into, and we've got an extra one here. And we've got our 20 pin here. Doesn't look like we have a four pin, so not much power requirement in this one. And this right here is a PCI slot, not a PCI Express slot. So it won't be able to take the graphics card that I currently have in my other computer, but that's not a big deal either. 
we will be able to get some expandability for something like more SATA ports or something like that if we need that in the future, because I'm thinking of maybe using this space over here for more hard drives. And it looks like we've got two SATA ports on here, one of which is free. And then of course, we've got the two IDE connections here. I think I have an older IDE 500 gig, so I might use that. Let's just get this all out so that we can see what's inside. So we got a pretty good hard drive, just a standard SATA one, SATA power, not Molex. It's a 80 gig, which is what they, which was what FreeGeek, at least in my area, ships with all of their computers. At least it's, I think it's at least an 80 gig, and then at least two gigabytes of RAM, which we have, of course, right there. Yeah, Seagate Barracuda. Not that big, but it should be just fine. Okay, so that's kind of it. Now you can see it all. I'm just gonna take this IDE connection out to clear up some space. Probably gonna do a bit more cable management with the things we don't need here. Um, these just go to the front panel, it looks like, which, by the way, has some very, of course, useful ports. Everyone who needs compact flash will love this computer. And it actually has Wi-Fi as well. Looks like the Wi-Fi card's kind of jammed right up in here. And then I'm not sure where it connects to. Looks like it connects here to get power. And to connect to the motherboard. I was hoping that it might have a PCI connection that we could repurpose to something else, but it looks like it's just jammed in there. I've got DDR2. This is a one gig stick, two of them in there. These, I think, are the newest parts of this system. What FreeGeek does is they take old systems that aren't necessarily working and get them into working order so that they can be resold to people for pretty cheap, which is how we got this one, of course. Um, so I'm thinking maybe it was the RAM that was the issue because these look like new sticks. But I could be wrong. Not really a big deal. Two gigabytes is more than enough. They're, they actually had one gig in there, and then they're like, oh, we'll upgrade that for you because there needs to be at least two gigs. It's like, okay, not gonna complain, even though I only need, really need one, but. So both DIMM slots are full. Let's get this hard drive back in there and get some Linux onto it.
Okay, so I'm back after a while, even though it doesn't seem like that long to all you through the magic of editing. Um, my audio cut out, so I hope you enjoyed that little fast forward back there. Um, it's a couple hours later, and this thing's still chugging along, which is a good sign, although it's only installing this right now, it's not really doing anything. Um, so this is the manual installation process. I got to here after, this is kind of the last step of the Ubuntu installation, which you should know, because Ubuntu is really not that complicated to install, and it's pretty common. Um, so I can't do anything because my keyboard's in my actual computer, but let us plug it into this one. Oh, and I forgot I have the Ethernet in my other computer also, so I have to move that back once more. So I don't need a desktop, who needs a desktop? Um, lamp? You know what? Sure, let's install a lamp server. Mail server? Nah. Um, Samba for sure. Lamp is great actually, it'll just allow us to install everything. It doesn't look like you can actually just install Apache. So that's interesting, you have to have the PHP and MySQL stuff as well. Um, these are all desktops, which I'm not sure why it's doing that since it's on, um, it's the server installation. Um, open SSH for sure. I guess we could do the basic Ubuntu server. I don't know, we can change all these later, just because we can. Um, how do I get out of here? <laughs> um, I know that does that. Escape, maybe? Hmm. Okay, well that seemed to do something. Um, oh, I think that reset to the original configuration that we had set up. So maybe it'll ask us to do that again and we can try again to, I can try again, to figure out what I'm actually supposed to do. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I guess while it's doing that, I'll take some notes on the system. How that's going. It's going to open it up real quick just to get a better idea how this is working. Whenever you buy a used system, it's good to just get a feel of how it works, even though this one seems like it's been taken care of and it's pretty good condition. Um, the drive bay is definitely helping to have removed that. When I open up the little flap, there's definitely air being pulled through there, so hopefully that'll help a little bit just to keep the fan spinning a little bit slower, keep it a little bit quieter. I don't have any exact thermal readings yet, but the heatsink does not feel hot at all. So that's a good sign. The power supply is getting a little bit hot, which is what they actually mentioned might be an issue with the audio, which was kind of crackling. There was some kind of interference, but I'm not really worried about that. Oh, seems to be chugging along just fine. Definitely the first things that I'm going to upgrade the system, if what I do to make it a little bit more capable, would be more storage. It's got 80 gigs, which is just fine, but it would be cool to have some kind of NAS capabilities. Maybe I'll install a, remote, a more robust file system. There's little signs that say don't touch the fan, I'm going to touch the fan. Makes a nice noise. Okay, well it looks like it skipped that product part or installed it, I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter seeing as I can just install those separately, the LAMP server and SSH, oh, and Samba also. Those are really just app-kit install, not much configuration. LAMP server takes a bit of configuration, I guess. Um, another issue I think I'm going to have with this is that there is only... The power is very limited. Let's see. Windows Vista is still on here? Interesting. Huh. Okay. So I guess they didn't entirely wipe the hard drive. Um, don't want to install it on my Kingston HyperX. By the way, Kingston HyperX. Incredible USB drive. Definitely consider it if you're going to buy a USB drive. It's a bit pricey, but it's 64 gigabytes basically an SSD in there. I've got all my operating system on there, a whole bunch of 
Linux distributions, most of which are just different revisions of Ubuntu that whenever it gets updated, I pop a new one on there and never bother to delete the old ones, but, oh well. Um, okay. So let's see if it posts. I mean, I know it posts. Let's see if it boots up into Ubuntu. I don't see why it wouldn't. Unless, did I put USB as the first boot device? Looks like I did it. Okay. Um, so there's Ubuntu, and I, I trust that that'll work. I'm curious what the Windows recovery environment is like on here. I wonder if I could... Oh, okay. So that's just kind of a dead end. Let me take my USB flash drive out. Try that again. I think it's just... Yeah, okay, so it doesn't actually exist. It's just somehow the bootloaders. I bet there's like a recovery partition still on there that's kind of hiding, and maybe it's like NTFS, so Linux wasn't really aware of it. I'm not sure, but we can check that out, I guess. Let's boot into Ubuntu. Ubuntu. 